So moving on right now. So after hearing from you know industry experts and panelists on interact females, it is time to explore more in terms of what are the challenges, what are the areas that you could use and the use cases. So in our next session, we're going to be talking to a growth leader inside MailModo, where he's going to be talking to you and take you in a visual journey of interactive emails. We will discuss use cases, campaign ideas, and a whole lot more, right? So Vaibhav, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, sir. Hi Thomas. Hi, how are you? Doing great, man. Doing great. So Vaibhav, obviously we've been hearing, having a power pack session talking about, you know, the whole idea of interactive events, right? Right from the guys who are make, driving the change to the champions at their companies pushing this technology and, you know, seeing great results. So, you know, for the rest of the audience today, let's talk about why should we look at this, right? Why, what, why do we look at or explore this modern technology in emails, right? How does interactivity really help? I mean, I know dropouts matter, it improves conversions, but if you could just sum it up in between and show us why we should explore interactive emails. Right, absolutely, Thomas. I mean, before we get into that, right? So in, in one of the sessions, in the first session, there was a poll that said, you know, who all have, you know, actually, uh, you know, experienced interactivity, right? And, you know, 60%, uh, I think good 62% of the people said, they have, you know, they, they know about it, but they have never experienced it, right? But I'll show you something very interesting, right? Uh, you know, all of us have actually experienced interactivity or AMP in that matter, right? Anyone who has used Google Docs, anyone who has used Google Sheets, uh, you know, any or, you know, or any other Google products, right? Somewhere or the other, we have experienced interactivity. For example, in one of such cases, you know, whatever I could find before joining the call, uh, for example, this right, this this particular comment is assigned to me. I can add my questions here. You know, hey, I click on reply or mark is done. I mark is done. You know, my uh, job is done here, right? So Google has been using interactivity for a very long time, solving uh, you know problems. Uh, you know, Akiv mentioned, Dimitri mentioned, Matt mentioned, right, and all our other speakers mentioned, right? So this has been in our lives. It's just that now, uh, you know, you can use it for your brands, right? Uh, now, coming to your question, right, Thomas? So, you know, we all spoke about uh, bottom of the funnel, right? Funnel is a word that all of us marketers have heard or used somewhere in our life, right? Uh, Ake mentioned about revenue. Teresa mentioned about bottom of the funnel, right? So this is how the legacy funnel looks like for an email marketer today, right? All your acquired customers, you send them an email in different cohorts, different segments, doesn't matter, right? Or let's let's assume 100% of those emails got sent, right? A good 20% people also open the email. You know, market-wise, less than 3% people actually end up clicking it, right? So you already have a drop of here versus... Oh, so sorry, from... I think, you know, we're not seeing yeah. the screen if you guys are sharing something. Is it? Yeah. Is it, is it All right, there available? Yeah. yeah. All right, my bad. Yeah, so I was just talking about how the funnel looks like, right? Uh, we all spoke about the bottom of the funnel and how that helps drive revenue, right? So for example, here, right? So all your acquired customers, you send them an email, you know, 20% people open, there is some drop off here. Uh, out of those 20% people who open, less than 3% say clicked, right? Now there is a drop off here. Now, okay, you know, great. At least 3% people clicked the CTA button you wanted them to click, right? But from this click, the CTA, which is not your final conversion, you know, good 50% to 70%, 80% people drop off, right? Nobody wants to go somewhere else, perform that action you want them to, right? That could be something as simple as giving a review, giving, you know, an NPS uh, or updating a form, right? We heard it from Benita, we heard it from, uh, you know, different other speakers today. Now, this is what AMP or interactive funnel looks like right so all your required customer you send them an email let's keep the number same email open just because you've bought, you know got the action a little closer to your user you have a bigger playground or you can say a bigger funnel to play with and you know if you have a bigger funnel i mean you know you you can definitely uh, you know look at higher conversions and conversion by uh, you know conversion i mean more revenue or whatever the goal that you're trying to kind of drive does that make sense brilliant i mean this is a great picture on how you know what at the end of the day what does interactivity do right i mean yes features are there use cases are there but i mean this kind of depicts in terms of hey you know what 
I can increase the probability of you know more conversions by just increasing the sample size or increasing my target base, right? And the fact that you're able to bring up the action way above the funnel, that small change can have huge impacts. And we have clearly seen the impacts, right? We've seen Monster, we've seen I mean, who is now called as Founded, we've seen uh, uh, different companies across the board kind of seeing crazy results, right? So uh, right. brilliant start, Vibha. Thank you so much for this. This kind of breaks it down. Maybe now what we'll do is let's go into a couple of use cases scenarios, right? I, I would love to double down on elements, right? So we spoke about a lot of use cases till date, but I think we should kind of double down on certain elements that, you know, we've seen customers using and we think you know, everybody can use, right? So let's go one by right. one. Right. I mean, see, some of, you know, one of the most common use case everyone on the call today spoke about is forms, right? I mean... Forms is around us everywhere, right? So be it any website you pick up today, you will find forms. These could be, you know, subscribe to my newsletter form. Uh, you know, you, this could be, you know, you know, give me your data, uh, you know, lead information, upsell, cross-sell, forms are everywhere. NPS surveys everywhere, right? Now this, you know, of course is one of the top use cases everyone is using in, uh, you know, interactive emails today. Right, use cases are immense. Uh, you can talk about KYCs. We have customers, you know, who are sending out forms for the drop off KYC drop off users. You know, making them mm -hmm. start from where they dropped off from. These are, you know, surveys like I mentioned, onboarding forms, uh, reviews, whatnot. Right, and hearing from you in terms of the use case, right? I can see it's quite it's quite varied. So I don't think it's only limited to a marketer, right? Maybe if you could share some light on. What are the different personas that you have seen who are using it from the contrary thing that, okay, this is an email marketing tool. It's only designed for marketers, right? So maybe if you could expand and show on that. Right. You know, I think that's a great point uh, that we should all speak about, right? Emails in general or any sort of communication is not just limited to the uh, marketers in general, right? I mean, emails are today being used by the product teams. These could be, you know, transactional emails for that matter, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yep. emails that, you know, final, you know, so for example, for found it, right? Uh, the, the final conversion is, you know, getting more and more users to update their profile. That's one of their main product use case, right? Now, Using, you know, we see product, you know, product managers, uh, you know, we see product, you know, leaders kind of getting onto it, even using interactive emails in the day to day transactional emails these days, right? So, forms, for example, or any other use case, you know, let's say, let's say, you know, a review system, right? These all can exist in your transaction emails as well. So, the personas are not just limited to the marketing teams, but also the product teams. Brilliant. Thank you so much for the Bible. So let's 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 move on, right? Let's move on. So we got forms where that can help uh, product managers, we can get marketers to KYC. I do remember hearing from you know the Blue Sky, which is you know one of the top upcoming social media platforms in the US, uh, obviously backed by Jack Dorsey, who's kind of using a very simple logic of forms, but to verify you know people and get them on base because it's still invite based system. So and and the okay. conversion they're seeing is crazy. So uh, it's pretty yeah. cool. Now I see that you know we're talking about gamification, which again is a very you know interesting aspect. Uh, talk to us more as to what does gamification do, right? I mean, why should a marketer say that? Hey, you know what? We should gamify emails, right? What is the intent behind it? What's the psychology behind it? I see. It's pretty simple, right? How you know in the first session, Dimitri mentioned that you know how you know one scratch the card campaign you know, got one of their clients 27% more CTRs, right? And, you know, more coupon activations, right? At the end of the day, we have to look at the, you know, human psychology, right? You know, with these gamifications, if you can give, you know, the user a small moment of win, uh, you know, and when you actually win something, uh, you know, this could be a coupon mm -hmm. code, for example, you know, you immediately think, okay, hey, I, you know, I played a game, I won something, let me go check out what I won, right? And hence the coupon activation in general increases. Right. So it's, it's just about giving that small moment of win. Right. I think that's what gamification actually solves for. Right. And that's why, you know, you see all these, you know, super apps today using all sort of gamifications. Right. Uh, you know, just to get your users engaged or spend more time on the app. Right. Gamification does exactly the same. Right. No, nobody wants, you know, the start, you know, I have 10,000 unread emails in my inbox today and all of those are static and all of them, I think good 80% of those emails have a coupon code in it, but doesn't matter, yeah. right? Because the rest of the 80% also giving me the coupon. 
Right. So I, mean, I, I think and, as and, for me, that's yeah. And it's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, this is uh, the first thing that we think about is, hey, you know what? E-commerce brands will really love this because this right. is a great way of kind of you know incentivizing users to engage with the emails, also give them a you know reward after that, and in turn get more repeat orders from them. Right. So it's right. a lot of you know, uh, you know you know results that we get from it. But I think if you it's not just limited to e-commerce players, right? We are seeing right. other industries also kind of gamifying it, right? I love the way, right. you know, uh, Vinita from Founder did it. I love the way uh, Muzaffar was trying to gamify that, right? So it is pretty cool to see different types of industries gamifying the experience. And uh, this is only the beginning. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more games coming in, right? Uh, right. The other aspect I want to talk about is, you know, uh, you know, booking meetings, right? So we have a lot of, like Tracer was talking about earlier, is you know, trying to find the right intent lead for my sales team, right? So that, you know, they focus their work on the most highest intent lead, right? And I think that's the next one we're talking about. Uh, what kind of interactivity or elements we have seen that help customers do this? Right. I mean, see, you know, okay, brands like, for example, you, you know, imagine a tech customer, right? Uh, you know, and a tech brand who kind of allows you to speak to the alumni of the brand, Right. Now, you know, the, me as an end user, if I want to buy that course, I want to speak to the alumni first, right? Now, if I want to book, you know, a slot with the alumni, if I am supposed to click, go somewhere else and then book a meeting, it is anyway a three-step process for me. You know, the action is farther, right? This could be, for example, you know, a health tech industry, right? Who who wants, you know, lab tests to be, you know, to be done and you want to book a slot with a doctor or anything else, right? Again, the, the action is, you know, the idea is to bring the action to the user. Now, if if I as a user can book a slot with my doctor from inside the email, from the email communication that I'm anyway going to receive, it just makes it easier, mm-hmm. you know, a better user experience for me, right? And this this goes across, you know, all the industries who at some point or do use appointments or bookings as one of the cases. Yeah, I mean, you know, for us, for example, in Mailmodo, uh, we have Calendly as you know which is one of the most widespread uh, used calendar booking you know platforms out there right so we people can actually book those slots uh, from right inside the email how cool is that that's definitely cool i mean i've seen uh, uh, saas companies to use this functionality to not just book demo calls or meetings for sales reps but also for the onboarding and for the customer success guys right exactly. uh, it makes it easier yeah. for the customers to connect and it's great for the company to be as close as possible to the customers because that's when you know you you know you're making true impact. You know what's wrong. You're able to be proactive and you know not be just reactive to every complaint that you get. So this is pretty cool. Uh, the ne- let's move on to the next use case. What is the next one that you have in mind? All right, I think this is something somewhere related to what we spoke about as a gamification. But I want to bring this up in a different light this time, right? Now think of it like right. this, right? So I mean, we we have a lot of newsletters coming to us today. One of the examples, I think, we have. Uh, from BQ Prime also mentioned about, you know, being using one of the newsletters, right? Now, yeah. see, what is the idea? Why, why do you receive newsletter or why does brand send you newsletter? The idea is for you as a user to consume the content in it, right? And an average user has an attention span of only eight seconds, right? Or how much content can you consume and consume on those eight seconds? Now, if you can make these newsletters interesting, now think of, for example, in the newsletter, whatever the content is, there is a quiz, about the same content mm-hmm. that's written up there, right? The user is engaged. Mm-hmm. They're spending more time. They're now, since they've spent more time with you, you know, that brand recall exists now, right? And I think that's what boosts engagement more than just, the, you know, distribution of the coupons, etc. It is also yeah. what drives engagement. Polls, right? One of the most cool features, uh, you know, everyone uses it so often on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn and whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not emails, right? In the newsletters, okay, I am speaking about topic A, B and C. Let users tell you what they are thinking related to that topic inside a poll. Something like that. So, you know, that's what right. gets yeah. you users engagement. Yeah, That's cool. I mean, I like the way you have varied use cases. Uh, what else do you have in terms of, you know, let's say... Uh, I was discussing in another day, talking to a bunch of marketers who happen to be from you know, insurance pre- pre- profiles, right? Insurance companies, bankers, you know, and I think you have got something to show us as to how people from that industry can you know, use interactivity. See, I, I'm sure, like, I mean, see, the idea is to kind of talk about 
you know, all kind of industries who can use, you know, so being in the growth team, right? I get asked this question a lot and I see a lot of questions in the chat as well. You know, can my industry use it? right? I am from this industry, you know, how can I use interactive emails, right? So that's the idea, right? To trying to cover most of it. Now, you know, all these fintech players, right? Or whoever, or for example, head tech players, right? For that matter, right? You would notice, and you know, this is after me speaking to a lot of these product marketeers, right? They talk about how calculators on their website has the highest traffic or mm-hmm. the most substantial traffic. And this is one of their keys to generate those leads, right? If if you as a user go and play with one of the calculators means you have high intent, mm-hmm. right? And since you've given that data to the, you know, on the website, you're a lead, right? Now, imagine sending the same calculators right inside the email. This could be, you know, your insurance premium calculators. This could be your SIP calculators. Uh, these could be your EMI calculators, how your brand, you know, gives you a better rate of interest, for example, right? This could be BMI calculators in the health tech industry, right? This could be, uh, you know, calorie count calculators, right? I have one of the grocery, uh, you know, uh, brokers or, you know, an app in India who wants to send out, uh, you know, products and, you know, allow users to count calories inside the email. I mean, oh, right? Okay. So more of a yeah, BMI so calculator. A lot of use more of a BMI calculator, yes. All right, perfect. All right. And yeah. um, uh, there, there, are, there is other use case that, you know, I think uh, I would love to see, which is essentially what you're going to be showing, because I feel yes. this is the most important aspect that, you know, airlines should be fixing right now. I hate the process of web check-in in India. So, you know, maybe if you can just quickly give a, give a minute or so on what this does and how we can improve that. Right. I mean, uh, so this is one of the use cases, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm speaking to Teresa about as well, right? So see the idea, me as a user, we, we board a lot of flights uh, and, you know, the experience of web check-in is anyway broken, right? You know, forget about, you know, just the web check-in bit, right? But also think about, you know, all these, uh, you know, uh, airlines have an option to upgrade your seats, right? Mm-hmm. But could you do it inside the email, right? So right now, so for example, when you book a flight, you have to click on a CTA button, log in into the app or wherever you have booked it from, then go select the seats, select the meals and all of that. And most of the time it doesn't work. So you have to go to the airport to do it, right? That only if I could do it inside the email, it just makes it simpler for me as a user. Again, this is, uh, you know, from a user experience perspective, if an airline could do it for me, I would love it, right? Even if I have to pay a premium for it, like, you know, for example, in this case, we had uh, did this, we did this for SpiceJet is one of the airlines in India. We had tried or, you know, showed one of this use case there. And I mean, this works for the user in terms of the user experience in general. I think, and as you were telling me, it's, I don't think it's, I mean, it definitely helps the user experience. But as I was thinking about it, is that, you know, it does help in also, you know, handling the traffic in the airport, right? Because right. a lot of people, you will find a lot less people in standing in queue to get a boarding pass, right? Where Because they right. have not checked in yet. They could just go straight to right. the kiosk, print it themselves, walk straight up, right? So it kind right. of helps in a lot of aspects. Uh, I think the big picture is huge. And obviously, it's going to take time for people to understand this. But yeah, I mean, right. this is great. Thank you so much, Viber, for this. Just any last words before we end the show today? Um, I mean, you know, I think we have covered most of it in, you know, throughout different uh, sessions. But I would say that interactivity is the future of emails emails have not been changed in decades uh you know if you want to stand out to your users improve give them a better user experience check out uh you know interactivity test out you know different ideas experiment with different ideas and i'm very sure or something that i've seen firsthand i've seen you know users getting more engagement more conversions and whatnot right so it, it is always a good idea to experiment new things uh in the technology if you want to keep catching up you know, with the, you know, the changing landscape of technology in general. Perfect. Thank you so much, Vaibhav. That's a great end. And obviously to everyone Thank right you, now, you know, just go have a, go test out interactivity, right? If you need help, just hit us up. We'll give you an idea. We'll let you test it out. It's definitely going to help you in a long-term game also, right? But you're going to see crazy results. You're going to see a lot more adoption from customers.